Welcome to SQL Server Denali, always on NextGen HDR solution. Till now we covered part 6 session 2 videos where talk about normal Denali setup and network configuration. We configure a domain controller, preparing nodes for failover cluster. Configure 2008 R2 SP1 failover cluster and install a standalone Denali on both the nodes. On video 6, session 1, we discussed what are availability groups and how does it work. In session 2, uh, continued the discussion where we find out the differences and some of the failure scenarios. Uh, in part 6, session 3, we will be enabling the availability groups for now. Let's start with that. I am on QDC DB21. I'll click on Server Manager and I'm at Failover Cluster. Let's check the status. Uh, till now, we are continuing with the default uh, quorum mode. We'll not be using the shared storage, thus we'll configure a file share quorum. And for file share, we'll use domain controller for that. So I'm at domain controller. Let's open the explorer. I'll go to C drive, I'll create a folder. File share witness. I'll share with the specific people just for the example simplicity we'll take everyone add and we'll give it read write access this is the share witness we have I click done so we have a share available let's go back to node 1 and configure the quorum I'm back in uh, QDC DB21 uh, let's configure the quorum Uh, we'll put node and file share majority. Next, share folder path. Browse and W. All right, so we got the domain controller. Uh, there, it already figured it out. Share folder witness. So we'll select OK. Now this will be the share file share witness. We are ready to configure. Click next. Confirm that you successfully configured the quorum settings. Click finish, and there you go. Now, node and file share majority is the quorum configuration, and this is your share folder. And let's look at the service applications. There is nothing there in nodes. You have two nodes. Uh, there's nothing on those nodes. No storage network. We configure the cluster name. So at this point, we are good to enable the service you have to change the configuration to enable the TCP IP so we'll go to the configuration manager click on network configuration SQL server enable the TCP IP it requires machine to be rebooted so we'll restart the SQL server service also make sure that both the nodes uh, you make this change and restart SQL server service Okay, I'm back on node 1. I just made the change. Now let's go and connect to both the SQL Server and validate. We are able to connect. TB21, I'm able to connect. Agent job is disabled, which is OK. Let's connect on 22. So it's important to connect and validate. Uh, this is where you will get an error if your TCP IP connections are not enabled. Now to enable availability groups, uh, go back to the configuration manager on SQL Server Services, right click and click on Properties. Click on SQL HADR tab. Now this is your failover cluster name and even though you have installed a standalone Denali instance, SQL HADR push will figure it out what is the failover cluster if there is a node configured here it saws that and it allows you to enable sql hdr service once you enable it it will change the registry of windows cluster to enable hdr service click on apply uh, asking for the reboot go ahead and reboot it let's go to the second node and do the same DB2 just 
let's validate your failover cluster is looking good here click on configuration manager services properties TTR enable and click apply you have to restart now let's validate if there are any changes onto the failover cluster because of this as you can see there are no services available here no nodes no change you can see here so the service will be visible when you configure an availability group in SQL Server Management Studio uh, thanks for watching this video we just enabled availability group now we'll go ahead and next video I'll cover how to configure an availability group